Okay, this is the saucer something, the saucer um, feedback episode for George Adamski's Cosmic Philosophy. Let's go first to email where Lester asks, when saucer fiends talk about science, do they mean the sorts of scientists who endorse every new toothpaste or floor wax? Actually, Lester, I don't think that those scientists are returning um, contactees' calls very much, even back in the 1950s. I think maybe the scientists who sell grain alcohol as a cough medicine at the county fair might be, uh, might be closer to it. Moving to Twitter, Black Wolf says uh, that George Adamski's Cosmic Philosophy sounds like the title of a sci-fi rom-com slapstick movie in the Blake Edwards Victor Victoria model of naming, and he um, wants some casting ideas. Space Captain says that Saucer's allowed Adamski to adapt his royal order of Tibet to a changing world. Bethram, Fry, and others followed suit by taking contact into metaphysical realms. Where would any of these people be without Blavatsky? And theosophy and Patrick uh, Patrick chimes in on Twitter as well about theosophy, saying that Adamski's later mes- metaphysics owes less to Orthon than to his earlier dabbling in Catherine Tingley's L.A.-based theosophy, which inspired his nutty Prohibition-era winemaking Royal Order of Tibet Foundation, where he anointed himself as its philosopher. So a sort of Patrick says repackaging of twenties L.A. theosophy. Um, that was, in Patrick's words, bananas. Theosophy is one of those things I'm going to have to get my head around one of these days, if for no other reason than there is a William Dudley Pelly episode on the horizon and theosophy and theosophical ideas play a role in that. But speaking of the Royal Order of Tibet, as we move to uh, some comments left on the website, uh, Kirk, who requested this topic in a roundabout way uh says um is curtis peoples reliable uh who wrote curtis peoples wrote watch the skies that's my aside if so then adamski had something in common with l ron hubbard the latter infamously is alleged to have started scientology in order to get rich well according to peoples when adamski's winemaking business went south he later told two friends that's when he quote had to get into this flying saucer crap and i think peoples peoples book is is fairly reliable i don't he's you know, sort of, sort of very straight laced, straightforward. But the prohibition era wine making story, the first place or the place I always see it when it's footnoted, the place I see it footnoted is in Douglas um, Curran's sort of coffee table book in advance of the landing, a folk history of spacecraft or of, of space travel. I I can't remember the exact um, folk ideas of outer space. I think that's the subtitle. That's where I first encountered that. And that's where I I think Peebles footnotes that there. Um, As far as Adamski's Royal Order of Tibet organization, I I don't know. I, I keep thinking maybe I should look deeper into the Royal Order of Tibet. And then I think... Uh, no, that's, that's nothing, uh, that's nothing I need to do. Kirk, by the way, did, uh, say that he quote, he thinks I quote, did better than you gave yourself credit for. And he appreciates the effort. Um, and he was, uh, Kirk was impressed by the enthusiasm of the lady who introduced, uh, introduced Adamski to that flying saucer club out in, um, out in Massachusetts. And uh, that she regarded his ideas as powerful and inspiring. And Kirk tells us that Arthur Lovejoy has an explanation as to why people are attracted to sophisticated sounding mumbo jumbo. This is Arthur Lovejoy's words, quote, the reader doesn't know exactly what they mean, but they have all the more on that account an air of sublimity. An agreeable feeling of once at once of awe and of exultation comes over him as he contemplates thoughts of so immeasurable of profundity, their profundity being convincingly evidenced to him by the fact that he can see no bottom to them. End quote. And Kirk says, for some, precisely because the words are not comprehensible, they seem brilliant. And Kirk concludes by saying that he has to grudgingly give Adamski credit because even though the man only had a third grade education, he wrote several books and manuals, gathered a substantial international following lasting to the present and kicked off the contactee movement, earning himself a place not just in UFO history, 
but in history in general. And I absolutely agree. And thanks, Kurt, especially for that um, that Arthur Lovejoy quote. That's excellent. And finally, wrapping things up for this uh, feedback segment, almost wrapping things up, um, is uh, Red Pill Junkie who commented on the website on what then should we attribute Adamski's popularity in saucer circles given the evident shallowness of his philosophy, his inherent charisma, natural magnetism? I think so. I, I think when you hear him speak, he comes across as as avuncular and warm and very charismatic, as as we've mentioned in this uh, little segment so far. He did have his Royal Order of Tibet operation going back into the 1930s. He'd always gathered people around him to listen to him. And I, I think um, the Lovejoy quote from Kirk applies here too. People are attracted to smart, astounding uh, mumbo jumbo. And um, RPJ also asks, and did his charm work on members of the female gender more than with males? That's interesting. There are a lot of women circulating around Adamski. A lot of his organizations, the Get Acquainted organizations, the local groups that he spoke at, a lot of times women are involved in um, in Detroit. Uh, we did an episode way, way back about the Detroit Flying Saucer Club. Uh, Laura Mundo was um, involved with that and she was an Adamski fan from way back. Um, and there, there's some suggestion that, that, you know, Adamski was, was a little, was a little, um, a little handsy, a little inappropriate at some, at some times with some of these women as well. I think that comes across in some of that early 1950s stuff, um, but probably no more, no more handsy than the average man working in an office back in those days, perhaps. And finally, Vincent uh, Vincent comments, quote, as soon as I realized you were actually reading Adamski's philosophy, I wanted to shout, no, Aaron, Adamski's philosophy is like the Necronomicon. It's cool to read about, but you don't actually read it lest you drive yourself mad. Adamski's philosophy is literary somonex. Whatever experiences he did or did not have, he had to put his words in the mouths of the Space Brothers to get anyone to listen. I... Agree. Um, in fact, that's kind of what I wrote about back in graduate school in my thesis and was the start of all that. The idea that whether it was philosophical ideas or so socio-political cultural notions of, of economic fairness, that the way to get these things in front of people was to glom on to this flying saucer movement. So that's it for the feedback for the Adamski's Cosmic Philosophy Will there be more Adamski philosophy in the future? I don't know. I, I really don't know. I do know that we're going in a very different direction next week with um, Helmut Lammer's book, Millabs, Military Mind Control and Alien Abduction, which is a difficult to obtain classic, but a reader obtained it for me, for which I'm very grateful. And this is going to be a two-part examination because it's... There's, there's quite a bit before and some after the book comes out. So there's some run up to it and then the book itself and then some, some falling action, as we might say. But that's next week. And uh, for right now, this is this week. And have a good week until I talk to you again. Hey.